guidance of Islam. And he said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَشْكُرُوهُ عَلَى نِعْمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ He said, people, Muslims, have taqwa of Allah Ta'ala and show gratitude, thank him for the ni'mah of Islam. This was Allah Ta'ala, he said, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَحْرِيَ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whomever Allah wants to guide, he opens up their chest, their heart towards Islam. And he said, أَفَمَنْ شَرْحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ is the one whom Allah has opened up his heart towards Islam. So he is upon a light from his Lord. Yani, is he like the one who Allah Ta'ala has made his heart restricted towards Islam so he is not guided? He said, verily this deen of Islam is the religion of truth. That which no other religion will be accepted from anyone. As, as Allah Ta'ala said, إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Verily the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Allah Ta'ala He said, وَمَنْ يَبْتَلِي غَيْرَ إِسْلَامَ دِينَ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from them. And in the next life, he shall be from the losers. Shaykh Fawzani says, Ya Khwan, he said, if you look at the inhabitants of the earth today, and I want you to think about this din of Islam, and you need to think about it every time you go out to the store, every time you go into the marketplace, every time you go to work, and you look around and see how many people have been given this ni'mah that Allah gave you. How many Muslims do you see? And then when you see Muslims, how many people have Allah Ta'ala blessed not only to have Islam, but to have Islam upon the understanding of the Salaf? You're going to find that you are in the minority. And it's because Allah Ta'ala specifically chose you to give you this ni'mah. Is, is, is this not the greatest favor that we could imagine? He says if you look at the inhabitants of the earth, then you're going to find that there are either people that have no deen at all. Like who? The atheists. They have no deen at all. He said so. He said, They don't even believe in the Lord of the Alameen. They don't believe He exists. He said, but, so they live the life of animals. They live like animals. And then he mentioned the verse, وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا أَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوثِينَ They say it's only this life of this world. We're not going to be raised to life. He says, so these people, they live like animals. He said, or you'll find that these people, that you find people, and they have a religion, but their religion is bothered. It's false. Either the religion of the Yahud or the religion of the Christians. He said, and their religion is not only, not only has their religion been distorted, but it's been abrogated. Right? Their religion of the Jews and Christians has been distorted and it's been abrogated. Now, he said, or you're going to find the people, and they are upon Wathaniya, idol worship. So they worship idols rocks and trees and graves and shrines instead of worshiping Allah Ta'ala. He said, so therefore, these pagans and kuffar, who, who this is their, their condition, he said, they don't have a life in this world, nor do they have a future in the next life. This life for them doesn't exist, and the next life for them doesn't exist. They don't have a life. And then he mentioned the verse, الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا يَتَمَتَّعُونَ وَيَأْكُلُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُوا الْأَنْعَامِ وَالنَّارِ مَثْوَى لَهُمْ Verily those who disbelieve, they enjoy themselves and they eat like cattle eat. And the fire shall be their destination. He says, but as for the one whom Allah has favored with the favor of Islam, He said, فَإِنَّهُ عَلَى نُورْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ then he is, as for the one who, who Allah Ta'ala has favored with the favor of Islam, then he is upon a light from his Lord concerning his aqidah and his worship and his interactions with others and his manners. Naam, he says, so he is upon a light from his Lord in all of his conditions. He says, so therefore, he lives in this world, the believer lives in this world at ease. He's comfortable. And in the next life, 
he shall be in the gardens of bliss of paradise. He says, so he has a halder, he has a life in this world, and he has a what? He has a future also. <coughs> he says, this is the one who Allah Ta'ala has favored with Islam. He says so, as it relates to this favor, we have to show gratitude for Yahweh. We have to show Allah Ta'ala that we are grateful for this favor, and we have to ask him to make us firm. Upon this deen until we meet him. Now Allah Ta'ala make me and you firm upon this deen until we meet him. And then he says, Jaquan, something that everyone has to understand. And don't be in doubt about it. Because what we're going to mention now, what Sheikh Fozan mentioned, is something not done by research. Not done by data. But this is a statement of Yahweh Azza wa Jal, the one who created the creation and knows us better than we know ourselves. He said... He said that enemies of Islam, they are not pleased that we remain upon Islam. They don't want us to keep being Muslim. He said, and they put every effort forward that they can to turn us away from this deen in totality. They want us to leave Islam completely. And then he mentions the verse. What do lo takfuruna kama kafuru fatakununa sawa'a? They would love that you disbelieve like they have disbelieved so you can all be the same. Naam? And he said, Wala yazaluna yakatuluna kum hata yurdu kum andina kum in istata'u. And they will not stop fighting against you until they turn you away from your religion if they are able to do so. He says, so this is their condition. He says, so they try to turn the Muslim away from his deen, Nahayyan, completely. So he can be with the disbelievers. And then he explains why they do this. Why do they want to turn the Muslim away from his deen? He said, Hasidan min indi anfusihim, min ba'di ma tabayyina lahum al he said, due to jealousy and envy that they have in their souls after the truth has been clarified for them. After they know the truth, then they become jealous. They don't want to see you praying and be Muslim. They become jealous, so they want you to leave Islam. He said, if they are unable to turn you away from Islam completely, then they are going to try to make you a Muslim by name only with no reality. If they can't get you to renounce Islam, then they're going to try to make you become Muslim by name only without any reality. He said, so the person will not pray. And he won't fast. And he won't worship Allah Ta'ala at all. Why you're cool and a Muslim. He's going to say, I'm Muslim. But he don't pray. He don't fast. Now, he said, so he's Muslim by name only without any reality. He said, likewise, they try to turn you away from Tawheed. And they try to turn you away from sincerity. And, and, and they want to push you to shirk. And they want to push you to worshiping graves and shrines. And, and, and bid'ah and newly invented matters. You find out, Quran, how many, if anyone has ever been to a Muslim country. Or if you ever made hajj. How many people do you see with those and qimars? Because this is important, Yaquan. When Sheikh Fozan is in his book, on uh, explanation of... Uh, when he's speaking about the grave worshippers and people who worship idols, he's not speaking about, you know, a, a, a person that, you know, like a, a Buddhist or Hindus. He's speaking about somebody in the car, somebody in the thobe. Like, when I was in Egypt, I was, I tell a story, I, I was riding a cab, and the cab driver tells me, let's go to the masjid that has the head of Hussein in it. He said, and if anybody knows me, you know I'm bad with directions. I can barely get around my own town of Durham. I told her, I said, stop the cab right here. Let me out. I'll get back the best way I can. I'm not ride with no grave worshiper. He's in Egypt and they worship grave Jaquan. And if you ever made Hajj and, you, and, you, and you've been to al Medina, you find a jamaat of people and they're praying to the Prophet Muhammad Islam. They're, they're praying. They spent all their life, their lifetime wealth to get the Hajj to go to Mecca and Medina to make shirk. They say, I'm Muslim. They make it high. These people, their cards are on their thiab, Yahshua. So understand, he's talking about people that call themselves Muslim. And they still worship graves, Yahshua. 
So this is why, and then the people say, you are the Aqidah police. Inshallah. What's better than being the pol policing your and the other people's Aqidah? Is there anything better than that? That thing was going to determine if we enter paradise or go to the hellfire forever. Because keep in mind, Yaqwa, a person that worships the grave, even if he calls himself Muslim, if he dies upon that, he's going to the hellfire, Yaqwa. Be that shek. All right? So, Sheikh Fozan says, and this is why you find that the people who support Bid'ah, the people who support newly invented matters and, and deviancy, are the Kufar. He said they financially support it. They give their money, they encourage innovation, and they give their money to support Ahlul Bid'ah. He said, and so they also want to remove Islam from your hearts, from your interactions, and from your manners. He said, so they don't want to see Islam enter inside the masjid. They don't want to see us pray inside the masjid. He said, and they want to remove Islam from the manners of the men and the women. He said, and unfortunately you have been successful in many different situations. So that they want for the Muslim to live. He can say he's a Muslim, but he wants them to have the manners of the kuffar. So he's a Muslim, but his mannerisms are like the kuffar. And you can tell, he says, because they'll begin to resemble them. And they'll begin to have the same appearance. And the same malabis, the same what? Clothes. He said, Hatta fi lukuti. Even when it comes to his language, he said, you'll find them hating the Arabic language, which is the language of the Quran. And he said, but they'll brag about knowing the foreign languages, like English. They'll brag about that. And they'll want to speak and write English. We've seen this, Shafwan. Some of the people, you go to him and say, Assalamu alaikum. Say, hello. He said, I'm going to to ashamed to return the salam. This is a du'a. The salam is not a greeting. Ya khwan, it's a what? It's a du'a. You're asking, you're asking Allah Ta'ala to give this person salama, to give him safety and security in his deen and his dunya. This is a major du'a. Major du'a. And people are too ashamed to make du'a for you. Especially if there's a non-Muslim around. They get embarrassed to say salam alaikum. But the non-Muslim will give you salams. Non- he said, likewise, when it comes to the women, they want to remove the Muslim woman from acting like a Muslim woman. And they want to remove her from wearing the hijab. And they want her to mix with the men, and they want her to travel without a mahram. And they want her to expose herself. They, they don't like when the Muslim woman acts like a Muslim woman. Now, he said, and unfortunately you find many of the Muslim women now, and they resemble the kuffar woman. Now he said to the point, this is Sheikh Fawzan Yaqwam. He said to the point that you cannot distinguish between the Muslim woman and the non-Muslim woman in the way they look and in their mannerisms. He then mentioned another plot Yaqwam that they have. He said, and they have a, another plan. He said, and that is, they give... Um, scholarships to many of the youth in Saudi Arabia. They give them scholarships to come to the West and study. He said, but they, there's a motive behind that. They don't like you. There's a motive behind that. The reason they're giving you a scholarship. He, and Sheikh Fozan Yaqwan, he says, and why do we need to send our children to the West to study? He said, has Allah Ta'ala not given us enough money to teach our own people? He said, Allah Ta'ala has given us plenty of wealth. We can teach our own people. And we have, he said, we have the ability to make universities at the highest level of um, academic scholarship. He said, we can do all that because Allah Ta'ala has blessed them with wealth. He said, but the people, they prefer to go abroad and study. Now, he said, and why... Do they want to take the youth, he said, the boys and girls from Saudi Arabia, why do they want to take them and bring them to the West? He said, they want to wash their brains. They want to brainwash them. He said, they want to brainwash the youth of Saudi Arabia. 
He said, and they want to make them soldiers against Islam and the Muslims. They want to take these youth from Saudi Arabia, bring them to the America and Britain and the like, and make them soldiers against Islam. Then they want to return them back to Saudi Arabia as enemies. Bring them to the West, brainwash them, and then return them back to the Muslims as enemies so they can destroy Islam from within. He says, so they will take back this ideology of the Kufar and bring it back and implant it amongst the Muslims. He says, so they try with everything that they have to destroy Islam. He said, you'll find that, you know, he said, and, and, and the Muslims, they become proud when somebody gets a scholarship. He said, they all gather around him. And, and he said, and people, they'll come and they'll stare at somebody who got a scholarship. They'll just be so, like, in awe. He said, this, he said so they, he said, as they say, they, they're digging their grave with their own hand. He said, so it's, Upon us to be alert and cautious of the plans of the Kufar. And he said, He said, Those who disbelieve from the people of the book and the pagans, they don't want for any good to come down upon you from your Lord. Hear what he said? They don't want for any good to come down upon you from your Lord. But Allah, He specifies with His mercy whomever He wills. And Allah Ta'ala is the owner of great virtue. Listen to what He says, Ya'khan. He says, Islam is not going anywhere. He says, Islam is not going anywhere. He says, because Islam has a Lord who protects it. Now, He says, so Islam is not going to leave the earth until the hour is established. You know, we, I mean, know the narration about when the last days come and the wind hits the believers and they all die and the only people upon the earth are the Kufar, right? He said, but lacking your men bow the nas, but Islam will be removed from certain people. Islam is not going to leave the earth, but some people are going to lose it. Man, watch Allah protect us. He said, so it's going to leave some individuals and some Muslims and it's going to leave some countries. Some countries are going to lose Islam. He said, but Islam will remain for those people that want safety. And they return to Islam. And then he mentioned the verse. And if you turn away, Allah shall replace you with another people. And they will not be anything like you. Now, then he mentioned the verse. Oh, you who believe, whoever apostates from amongst you from his religion. Then Allah will bring a people whom He loves and they love Him. They will be merciful with the believers and stern with the disbelievers and they shall strive in, in His cause and they shall not fear the blame of those who blame. This is the virtue of Allah. He gives to whomever He wills and Allah is expansive in knowledge. He said, therefore, Allah Ta'ala will not lose this religion. He said, but some people are going to lose it. Naam, he said, and then when they lose it, Allah will bring another people who will establish it. He said, so it is upon us that we fear for our religion and that we are cautious about it. And that we um, also protect the Muslim children. Naam, he said, because they come at the Muslim children from various angles. One way they come at the Muslim children is that they want people to be liberal. Anything goes. You can do whatever you want to do. Right? Or they're going to come to the Muslim children and try to make them extreme. They want to make them become terrorists. Go blow things up. He said, but as for Islam, he said, then we don't have any problem. Rather, it is from our religion that we interact with the disbelievers in a nice way. Right? The Muslim, when you interact with the non-Muslims, we interact with them in a dignified, respectful manner. As comes in the hadith of... Um, Abdullah bin Amr al Aws, that when he, may Allah be pleased with him, that when he slaughtered a sheep, he said to his servant, he said, Did you give a gift to my Jewish neighbor? Did you give a gift to my Jewish neighbor? He said it three times. 
And his servant was amazed, like, you going to give some of this meat to the Jew? And he said, verily, I heard the message of Allah, and then he, Salaam, salam, saying that Jibreel continued to advise me concerning my neighbor until I thought that what? That he would inherit me, or inherit from me. Now, he, and so, I'm a Sheikh Abdul Razak al he said, this shows that the campaign understood that what was meant by the neighbor is the neighbor, whether he's Muslim or not. That you are kind to the neighbor. And this also shows that the Jews were living with the Muslims. So the people think the Muslims, we go around killing Jews. The Jews were neighbors with the Sahaba, Yahwa. Rather, the Jews were neighbors with someone better than them. Who? The Prophet Muhammad Islam. These, the the um, Sheikh explained that that young Jewish boy was his neighbor. The one who took sick. The one who used to work for him. And so he went um, to visit the young Jewish boy when he was dying. And he told the, um, the Jewish boy to enter into Islam. And the boy did what? He looked at his father. And his father said, because his father knew the truth. He said, obey Abu Qasim. Obey the Prophet of Islam. And he entered into Islam. And the Prophet of Islam left the home saying, all praise belong to Allah. The one who has saved this boy by way of me from the hellfire. Now. He said, Yaquan, and so in conclusion, he said, and so they use every means that they have to destroy Islam. He said they're even using things today that they didn't have before, like these newly, that these technologies, you know, the new manners of um, uh, uh, communication. He said, and like the satellite dish and the internet. He says, so now a person can get any type of evil that he wants to get while he's lying on his bed. You know, back in the day for anybody who's, you know, above 40, you know, when you wanted to do some type of evil, it was some work to do evil. You know, he was a, he was a non-Muslim, you want to do some evil, it was work. You had to work to do evil. You had to go out, drive around, and but now a person can do evil right from his bed. And no one will know. A person can do evil right from his phone because of the internet. And Sheikh Hosein Yaqwan, he says that mentioning the hadith about that fitna that will enter every Muslim home during the last days, he said this fitna is the internet. He said the fitna that will enter the home of every Muslim is the internet. Naam? <clears throat> he said, and so this is this fitna that a, of, of, of desire and doubts that a person brings inside his home from where the internet, and it destroys the brains of the Muslims. He says, so it's upon us to be leery of these satellite dishes, Yahuan. And he says, and the shame of it is, even if you have a good man, and he doesn't want to bring the satellite dish in his home. So he's going to get opposition. Not from the cable company. They're going to ask him once or twice, and then they're going to leave him alone. But there's somebody else that's going to ask him maybe every day. Who? The wife. He's going to hound him. I'm bored. I ain't got nothing to do. She's going to hound him. And then when she gets tired, who's coming next? His children. And they're going to hound the man to bring the satellite dish in the home. Now, Sheikh Fozan, he says, this satellite dish, Akhwan, he says, this is that darkness. When the Prophet Muhammad Islam, he said, he said, race to do good deeds, race against that fitna that will come like a patch of black night. That a man will wake the morning up as a believer and he will reach the night as a disbeliever. Or another person will reach the night as a believer and reach the morning as a disbeliever. He will sell his religion from, for a part of the dunya. Now, Juan, you know what Sheikh they mean says about this satellite Yahuan? He says, think about this right. He says the man, because Yahuan understand we love our families. You know, a man loves his wife, he loves his children. But on the day of judgment, who are you looking out for? On the day that the person will flee from his brother. And from his, his mother and his father. And from his wife. He's going to run from everyone. And you're going to say what? Nafsi, nafsi. Me, me. It's about me. He said, so the man brings the satellite dish in his home. Right? And then he dies. And the satellite dish is still in his home. 
He said, so any sin that continues to go from that satellite dish while he's in his grave, it comes back on him. If your wife keeps that dish in the house for another 20 years and you're in that grave, all that sin comes back on you while you're in your grave because you brought it in your home. And you can't make Tobin in the grave. So you're in the grave and you're getting that sin for that satellite dish and everything that you may be watching, all the corruption that may happen to your kids and anything that results from that, while you're in your grave, that's on your back. And you can't make total. All because you wanted to make wife happy. And maybe she brings another brother in there. And she forgot about you and you still get the sin. I gotta do that. He said, and so you find that he, he said, and, and those people who they make empty calf in front of the TV, he called it empty calf. That they, they spend all night, they camp out in, in front of the, the, um, the TV. He said, and, and, and and they're there night and day. He said, what's the end result? He said, the end result is they begin to take evil lightly. They become desensitized. Evil now becomes normal. You know, the Muslims should be like, when you see a woman, you like, you know, drop your gaze, you, you turn away. But now it becomes like, it's odd. You know, you're watching the, the news. And, and don't think, y'all, on the news, they're going to put women commentators that are going to make men look. That's part of the, the program, Right? So man, so I, I just like to watch the, the, the news, you know. Okay. You can look at that woman broadcast the news for an hour. Then you can look at the commercials that come with it and it doesn't affect your heart. He said it, it becomes normal and you begin to take the evil lightly. He said, and then after you take it lightly, then you begin to enjoy it. And after you begin to enjoy it, you begin to love it and you don't disapprove of it. He said, so um, it's upon us to be leery of this fitna which has harmed the Muslim except those whom Allah Ta'ala has had mercy upon. And that we have to seek insight in this religion and hold fast to this religion. Naam. And lastly, Yaquan, we mentioned as Sheikh Muhammad bin Had, nah, um, uh, as Sheikh Abdullah al Bukhari, he mentioned how some of the people, some of the youth, he said, this is a phone call that he got. This is a real life situation that a man, young man called him up and he spends all night in front of the internet. And he says that he's like a student of knowledge. Spends all night in front of the internet. And so he said, as a result, he misses Fajr prayer. He said he misses the Lord prayer. He misses the Asa prayer. And he wakes up at Margaret and combines all the prayers together. What do you think he's looking at on, on the internet when he's up all night? I think he's memorizing Surah Falatha. He says he's looking at the Muharramat. He's looking at things, he's looking at that which is haram all night. He watches the haram all night and wakes up and can't and sleeps through all the prayers and then just combines all the prayer. And the Sheikh said and was and the, the bad thing about it is, Yaquan, is that when he was advised about this, he said, he mentioned the hadith, Laysafi noom tafrid, that there is no negligence when sleeping. It means that when the person is asleep, he's not blameworthy. The Sheikh says, SubhanAllah. He said, if you know the reason this hadith was sent down, then you know the meaning of the hadith. He said, this hadith was sent down because the Prophet of Islam was in the battle of Khaybar. And they were fighting the war, and so they overslept, and they misfed you. He said, which war were you fighting in that made you miss salah? Which battle were you in that made you miss salah? They were looking at the haram on the internet all night. You don't want to fight no battle. Who's was doing the, the, the mafia. He said, so you can't take a... He said, instead of making toba, and as he said, the Bible toba meant Torah. The door of repentance is wide open. He said, just repent to Allah Ta'ala. He said, but instead of making toba. He begins to make excuses. Well, you know, there's no negatives out on sleep, so the pen's lifted. He said, and the fear is that if a person misses all these prayers on purpose, this is your intention, you're going to miss all these prayers on purpose? He said, the person can leave his life because he intends to miss the prayer. May Allah Ta'ala safeguard our deen, our religion, and make us firm upon Islam and, and our salafiyah until he takes our soul and we meet, and we, and we meet him. 
Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi